John Cohn of Science Magazine, welcome back. What we think will be the biggest scientific news of this conference has come out today. You've written about it. What is it? It's a widely anticipated result um, of a study that looked at giving women a microbicide, which is a vaginal gel, and it contains an anti-HIV drug. These women are not infected with HIV, and the idea is that this will protect them from the virus. There have been lots of microbicides tested. They've all failed or only had such marginal success that people have argued about the results forever. This one, uh, I think to the delight of most everyone, worked. What were the results? It's not spectacular. It's a lead. It's something to build on. I don't think anyone's going to roll it out tomorrow. Any government's going to say, let's use it. But what they found was that in, there were about 900 women in the study. Half got a placebo gel and half got uh, the compound with the anti-HIV drug. And uh, the results are that it worked 39% of the time, over 30 months. Um, it was so beautiful because when you did an analysis of every little detail, it all fit in, it all lined up. So you end up with data that I don't think anyone's going to argue about. And not surprisingly, I guess, the, the li there was a strong link between adherence and effectiveness. That's what's really persuasive about this because logically you would expect that. The, the way you were supposed to use the gel was you insert it 12 hours before you anticipate having sex and then within 12 hours afterward. The women who reported using it 80% of the time or more had about 54% efficacy. The women who used it the least amount had the lowest efficacy. And the women who used it in the middle had the middle amount. So when researchers see stuff like that, they say, yeah, that, that's what it should be if adherence affects it and if it's working. And was the most significant difference here what, was, what the mic microbicide was made up of? Compared to the older ones, yes, because the older ones had soaps, surfactants, things in them that didn't specifically target HIV. This has an HIV drug that people who have HIV take that works. It's proven. It's on the market. No question. So the mechanism is perfectly clear-cut. With the soap, what's the mechanism? You know, you, you don't really know you're changing this electron over here, this cation over here. This isn't like that. This is, it targets HIV. And were there side effects? There were some, but nothing serious. There was some increased diarrhea, but nothing that really alarmed anyone. And it really now looks like the questions are, how do you improve adherence? How do you improve the drug? Maybe there's a better drug. And that's where I think the field's going to move now. So is there an add-on to this first phase of the study? This study's over with, but there's a second study that's underway that's testing the same compound and comparing it to two other things and uses a different dosing strategy. It uses a daily dosing. Maybe it's easier to adhere if you do it every day. And one of the other arms of the study is using a drug that combines the drug used here with another drug. Maybe that's more effective. Another arm of the study is taking the drug orally and comparing that. So I, the, the people I spoke with really want that study to validate this one and then compare apples to apples and see how to move forward. And it won't be until 2013 or so until those results are available. And the re results kind of fold into one of the themes we're hearing here in Vienna, and that is prevention as treatment. Yes, and, and it folds into an even grander dream, in a sense, which is pre-exposure prophylaxis. It's this idea of the oral pill that an mm -hmm. HIV uninfected person takes to prevent infection. That's being tested in more people than all AIDS vaccines. It's a hugely promising approach. So this really sets the stage for that, because this says, if this works, that's got a high likelihood of working. If that works, then we've got a whole new way to think about treatment as prevention, because it's not really treatment as prevention. It's using an anti-HIV drug in someone who is not infected. They don't need treatment. So I think it changes the language, and it changes it to antiretroviral based prevention, as some people say. And I think we'll hear that shift in language. Thank you very much. That was very interesting. Thank you, Jake. Okay.